My name is Mary Decatur with XRIDE's Application Support Team. Today, I'd like to take a few minutes to show you how to create a DNG profile using the Mini Color Checker as well as the Color Checker Passport software. Then, I'm going to walk you through what to do with these profiles once they've been completed. We'll create two profiles, one using a single illuminate and then an additional profile using a dual illuminate, which are known as dual illuminate profiles. The DNG file format is what I choose to use in my normal everyday workflow. There's a, a few different reasons why I choose to use DNG files rather than using the raw, raw format. First of all, the file size is about 20% smaller than a raw format. This is basically with all the data being tied into the image and the XMP sidecar file, which carries your copyright and your keywords. You're not losing any of this data, and you're going to have the same flexibility as a raw file as far as the image itself goes. DNG is also an open format from Adobe that allows users to always have the ability to open images that some proprietary software may not allow users to have in the future. Another probably most prevalent reason is that if you're a user that has more than one type of camera, you can have a Nikon, for instance, and a Canon. You've now additionally got two sets of different file formats working with RAW. DNG now allows those users to put all of those files together and simply use one format, which would be the DNG files. For me, it's a much smoother workflow. I can do the conversion right upon imports, and I have the same flexibility as working with RAW files. The first step that you're going to need to do when creating a profile is shoot the color checker, or excuse me, the color checker mini card in the RAW format. In order to create a DNG profile or apply the profile, these images must be shot in RAW and then converted to DNG through your third-party software such as Adobe Bridge or Lightroom or Photoshop. You're going to want to be careful when you shoot the image so that you're paying attention to your histogram. That way, you're preventing yourself from clipping or getting the image overexposed. This will prevent the profile from being created and it will always result in an image that is not usable for the creation purpose. Once that your image has been taken, there's no way to create an image that if you're going to have clipping or overexposure, that raw data is intact and the, the profile creation process is using all of that raw data to build off from. There's not a way to change the original raw data so that the profile creation software can see those changes. It has to be done at the original shoot. So please make sure that you're paying attention to your histogram and we also have some additional support articles and information in the operation manual that will go through how to avoid clipping and how to avoid, avoid overexposure. Once your image is imported into your computer or into your third-party software like what you're seeing here, you'll now have the ability to use either the Lightroom plugin, which is what I'm going to be doing here in a moment, or you can also open up the Color Checker Passport software and use the standalone. We'll be going back to the standalone software here momentarily. For now, we're going to work in Lightroom and I've already gotten an image that's been selected. As you can see, I'm on the develop tab currently. I like to do a lot of my work in the library tab only because I don't do a ton of work in Lightroom, but this is definitely gonna be whatever works best for you in your own workflow. So from the develop tab, when you file and then export with preset and as you'll notice the color checker passport plugin will show up underneath that option as you click on that you're going to have a new box that's going to come up that will say enter dng profile name so for the purpose of this we're going to simply call this daylight and canon it was shot with my Canon, and, and we want to make sure that the lighting condition is named in the file so that when we use it in later dates, 
we, we have an idea of what that was being done for. Click on Save, and then you'll notice up in the top left corner that the profile is being processed. Now, while that's working in the background, we're going to just click over to the library module. When you're inside the library module, you're going to have that same ability to do exactly what we've just done by going File, Export as Preset. Only here, there's a large box at the bottom left-hand corner that says Export. Simply click on the export box and you're going to be receiving the same type of information only with additional options that you can see. This is now bringing up a full image of your export options. Same thing, you're going to look for the X-Rite preset, color checker passport. You can type in a new name. We'll just call this one D50 even though we already named the other one Daylight. Same thing different wording and then again Canon and then at the bottom right hand corner you're going to click export and once that goes through you'll see now I have two operations in progress using the same image just for the purpose of our example now if you're using the standalone basically you're going to have that same ability You'll be able to take this very image here right directly into your standalone software by going File, Add Image, or you can also drag and drop the DNG image here. As you can see, for the purposes of what we're doing here, I've already had all of my images converted over to DNG files so that it would make our, our testing a little bit easier. I'm just going to simply navigate over to that particular image. So my computer is going a little bit slow today, that's okay. And we're going to select the image and then just click on open. And now it's going to load your image. As the loading process is taking place in the color checker standalone, you're going to notice that as it brings the image in, what it's basically doing with the card is locating this, the crop marks around all 24 squares of color. It needs to make sure that each one of these squares is being recognized and that it's doing that by the outer marks of the mini color checker. In this example, the crop marks are in the four corners, these little green circles, and they've already nicely recognized where the crops should be and it's placed each individual square over each individual patch. If you have a problem and the crop marks are not recognized either through Lightroom or even when you're coming over to the software here, you can simply click on this little guy here which will be your place crop marks option. Now we're gonna simply click create profile and it will be the same process. Once again, this was daylight, and so we're just going to go ahead and save. And that's how easy it is to create a profile using the mini color checker along with the color checker passport software.